Welcome back in the spotlight today, Must Tool MT8206 graphical multimeter, multi and oscilloscope to be exact. Let's take a look. The MT8206 ships in this basic box. Gives you a quick lowdown of the specs on the back of the box. Um, nothing to get uber excited about, uh, although it does have a pretty decent uh, capacitance range of 10 millifarad. Um, even though it says 200 microfarad here, that is not the case. Um, as well, you do get a pretty decent little travel pouch. Take this puppy wherever you might be. And it does come with a standard set of test leads. By the way, I want to thank a great subscriber of mine, Derek Todd, out in beautiful Northern Ireland. Thank you, Derek, for sending out the MT8206 for this review. The MT8206 is a 4,000 count auto ranging meter, does ACDC current voltage resistance, capacitance, frequency, recycle, diode, and continuity. Um, besides that, it also does feature a 41 segment analog bar graft. Now, really, to me, this is a waveform display meter, not an oscilloscope. It's just too featureless to be called an oscilloscope. So if you're thinking you're gonna get an oscilloscope, uh, you might wanna just keep on walking. But if you want just a basic general waveform display when you're looking at voltage or current over time, then this might be what you're looking for. Once again, another feature is the hold and save data. It allows you to save up to 100 sets of data points as well as 10 different waveforms. For looking at the display for the first time, personally, I'm not a fan. It's meek, it's weak, I don't like what I see, and eh, nah, don't like it. Another complaint I have is the fact that the selector switch is very easy to get lost in between ranges. Um, it does not hit those ranges with authority, which is really too bad. In terms of size, it's fairly diminutive. Um, if we take it up against the Habitest 118A, which I recently reviewed, you can see the Habitest is a good two inches or so longer and at least double the width. Now that being said, it's a fairly hefty feeling meter, um, not lightweight at all. The meter itself feels okay in the hand. Um, I like the fact that it has no rubber holster or housing. It's really just plastic. Um, so if this was to take a drop, chances are it's going to do some damage. On the back of the unit as well, it tells you how to install the batteries. And speaking of batteries, it takes three double A's. As well, you've got your sling bale or tilt stand. Yeah, that's my big faux pas. It comes apart really easy. Too easy. Ah. Starting things off, we are in millivolts DC. Volts DC. Volts AC. Frequency and duty cycle. Capacitance, resistance, iode, and continuity. A separate millifarad mode for high capacitance measurements. Milliamps, AC, DC. Finally, high current, 10 amp mode. Finally, another off at the three o'clock position. Have your discovery button. This is what will give you those graphical waveform displays. In the middle, the rail on the middle of that, the select, and finally, the hold uh, feature. Also the rel and select, you can see the up down arrows, that is to um, increase or decrease the waveform display as well. Once again, if we take a close up look at that display, you can see what I mean, it's rather pixelated. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of it. Starting things off, we have the voltage reference out, sitting at 250 millivolts. We are in millivolt mode, and you can see it is kind of going back and forth. I'm gonna leave the 250 just because this uh, reference has not been heating up for very long, so. Now it does have that audible range alert. You'll see what I mean. I've taken out the probe. We're still in volt mode, and it's telling us that we are over range. So I'm going to switch it to volts DC. We should be looking at 2.50 volts. Spot on. AC volts are next. Should be looking at 120 volts. And indeed we are, and we're getting that high voltage warning which is always nice. You're getting the visual as well as the audible indicator. You can see that sort of a lightning bolt at the top right of the scale. Uh, that's always nice when you get multiple indicators. Now, because this is a graphical multimeter, let's put it into graphic mode by hitting the DIS button. And you can see right now that we are getting a frequency readout here, just under 60 kilohertz at 122 volts. The uh, axis itself has no scaling. So, you know, you can adjust the base time, but there's no way that you can um, have any sort of indicator of what sort of timeline you selected. So really, you can't do any long-term time measurements. 
and uh, hey, there's no uh, same thing for the vertical axis. Vertical axis as well. Um, this is really a waveform display meter. Um, very, very, very basic oscilloscope, but that's it. That's all. So don't get any high expectations. I think when this meter was initially released, people were going, "Whoa!" You know, there's one cheap oscilloscope, but it's not an oscilloscope. So yeah, get that mind out of here. Think of it as a multimeter um, on some really cheap steroids. There's a Kodak. Yummy. Now, something else that I've noticed too, that the refresh is really slow. So even though you've got this kind of crappy um, low res display, the fact that your updates are so slow as well, you know, it's gonna affect the long term. You're gonna have distortion in the waveforms, what have you. Speaking of waveforms, we can try using the up and down arrows here. And there you go. So that's giving us more of that alternating current uh, display. So yeah, that's kind of neat. If you get a visual representation of what you're actually looking at, I will remove those test probes. And you see that will just dissipate. And it's gone. We stick them back in and get that high voltage alarm once again and there is that ac waveform display so i mean in a nutshell what you see is what you get it is what it is now the mt8206 has a rather interesting um capacitance mode because yes we are in capacitance but in reality this meter is one of the few i've seen that actually has two capacitance settings so in the basic setting that we're in right now um you can tell uh, it's sitting right on top of the diode resistance and uh, continuity selections. And what that means is that in this capacitance setting, it can do a maximum of 100 microfarad. So anything bigger than 100 microfarad, you actually have to switch it and go into millifarad mode. And this is good up to 10,000 microfarad or 10 millifarad. So a little bit different. Um, I don't know why they had to utilize this dual functionality, but there you go. Now, since we are in millifarad, millifarad mode, okay, here we go. See if we can do our 10 millifarad max without any hiccups. Three, two, one. It is thinking. It is thinking. And you know what? It's thinking. And there we go. 9.321 millifarad. Works for me. Okay, now we are in low capacitance, as you can see on the dial. And what that means now is I have to switch this test lead back into the COM port range. All right, here we go. A little bit confusing, I know. What were they thinking? 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor and 10 nanofarad, spot on. As well, we've got a 3.3 .3 microfarad. Two point nine, close enough. So as you can see, in terms of capacitance, it's fairly, um, capable, although a little quirky. Diode mode is next. Let's start off with a standard diode. 0.546 forward voltage drop. Next up, let's do some light emitting diodes. Here we go. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all for the green. That's not a good sign. And the yellow, nada. The red, Ooh, absolutely nothing. It is lights out in Georgia, folks. Finally, the white. No. Zero for five. If you do lots of diode testing, stay away from the MD8206. And yeah, no wonder diode mode sucks. Look at that output voltage, 1.5 volts, barely. So, oh God, horrible. Continuity time is next, starting off the default probes. Wow, it is just loud and very annoying. It's annoying because it's latched, but it just stays latched forever. Oh, gosh, I, I don't even know how to how to surmise this one. Don't like it. Next up, I've got our little pro masters. Here we go. Slightly better in terms of that latching uh, negating itself quicker, 
but at the end of the day, pretty well the same as the default probes. It is loud, it is lashed, but it is really slow to uh, regain itself. So, eh, fail. Fail! Fail. I said fail. Fail. <sighs> 75 decibels, the maximum output volume in continuity mode. We are now in high voltage mode. That's right. Put away the cats and the dogs. Get out of the bathtub. We're not messing around, folks. We'll soon find out. Put on those safety goggles. Three, two, one. Here we go. So right away, we've got that high voltage indicator and we are climbing to a thousand. Here we go. We are sudding almost there. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. Excellent. So 1000 volts, not a problem for the MOS tool. We do have that nice high voltage indicator, audible and visual. Looking good. Currently sitting in frequency mode right now. This does advertise itself as a 10 megahertz um, capable multimeter. Well, let's take a look. Sitting at 1 megahertz right now. Let's bring that up to 2 megahertz. And wow, looks like that's it, that's all. Interesting, okay, let's bring it back down to one megahertz. Yeah, no worries there. Hmm. 900, 800, 700 kilohertz. And that is not a problem, but when we hit that one megahertz, it seems to be a cutoff. 1.1 megahertz, 1.2, and it just goes nutty. So, oh, too bad. Once again, the frequency is out to lunch. Closing back at the chassis. Sad to report, no shielding. What else is new? Starting off the jacks themselves, um, they're okay. They are um, thin metallic uh, filament and they are um, being housed in that plastic casing. On the high current side of things, you can see they are utilizing an SMD style current shunt, and as well a, a 10 amp current is utilizing an SMD style fuse. A lot of residue over here. Um, the finishing job, not so great. On the middle side, we have a, a pair of transistors and one PTC. Finally, on the voltage side, we have one mob over here, and it's also utilizing these four uh, 2.5 mega ohm resistors. Over at the top over here, we have two 8-pin chips. These are dual op-amps, TLC2272s, and the smaller 10-pin IC over here is a dual analog switch. Large IC CS7721CN is a multimeter chip and microprocessor all in one. Then we have another chip over here, which as you can see, the details have been scraped, but that is uh, part of the communications uh, with the uh, display driver itself. And that is also connected to the EP ROM, the 24-7C64. Generally speaking, that is it. That's all, no NCV flashlight, all those other key things, not on this multimeter per se. Alrighty, gotta put things back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Moss Tool MT-206. Well, you know, I'm not that impressed. Hey, I was expecting a lot more, at least a little more. I just don't feel that this has a lot of bang for buck. Okay, you've got the buzzword. It is a waveform display slash oscilloscope, they want to say. I don't think so. Yes, it does show you some waveforms. Yes, there's a little bit you can do with it, but I really didn't do a lot with it here in the review just because it's just not capable of it. Um, it's not an oscilloscope. It's a multimeter with waveform display to a point. So if you're looking at it at that vantage, at that perspective, it's an okay meter. But once again, even the display itself, that LED just for me looks cheesy, cheap, um, something like Disco Fever in 77. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling it. Now this mode is really awkward and just a lot of bamboozling when you shouldn't have to. It has all the basic features that a multimeter should do, but even the diode mode, well, it basically sucked. And let's face it, the frequency up to a megahertz and that was it. Generally speaking, no, not a lot of value here. It seems like a work in progress. 
Even the logistics of the meter itself, inside and outside, seem half-baked. I'm going to give the must tool MD8206 a disappointing 2 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody! Stay tuned, lots more multimeters coming your way. As always, keep on testing.